I used to literally look like I want to look like Goku and like he would they would show the training that Goku would do (laughs) and I'm like now it's making sense on why he's so strong yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) what do you think of uh some of the testing and stuff like do you feel that it was pretty like even do you think it was pretty well like the testing was done pretty well to the point where a lot of the athletes were natural I know a lot of people listening are gonna be like there's no way like tested doesn't mean yeah yeah, Yeah, testing doesn't mean drug free or some shit yeah there we go there we go I I I personally disagree with that so let's say I'm here I have to like let them know that hey, I'm gonna be in Sacramento mm. doing this podcast yeah. at from like this point to this point. And then life goals, I just I mean I'm getting a little bit older, like 27, 28. So it's like I would like to have a family. I feel like a lot of lifters, I like a lot of new power lifters don't understand, like that that butterfly feeling. And I feel like that's when you're being stimulated. It's like when the adrenaline's running. Mm-hmm. So it's like whether I'm ready or not, if I feel that, I'm like, oh fuck, I'm going right now. Cause like my my body's ready to go. Yeah, yeah he called me out. He's like, this guy is an heavy guy. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Yeah. That was really good. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Russell or high. I was like, I was like, okay. Bad Project Family, how's it going now? On this podcast, we talk a lot about getting your lab work done. That's why we've partnered with Merrick Health. They're a telehealth network, and they're owned by Derek for more plates, more dates. But the amazing thing about Merrick is that when you when they get your labs done, they have a client care coordinator go over those labs with you. Now, a lot of you, when you guys are looking at labs and looking at your testosterone, cholesterol, etc., what Merrick Health does is they don't immediately throw a needle at you, okay? They can help you figure out what type of things you need to do in terms of your nutrition, potentially what you need to do through your supplementation. And if you're someone who potentially has hormonal issues, whether you're advanced in age or you do have very low testosterone, Merrick will put you on a protocol that is specific to you and that helps you out with your current levels. The problem with a lot of these other telehealth networks is that when they do HRT for individuals, they give everybody the same exact thing. And that can actually damage you and not be beneficial. That's why Merrick Health's the way to go. And Andrew, how do they go about it? Yes, that's over at MerrickHealth.com. That's M-A-R-E-K health.com. And let's say you just you just want to get your testosterone checked, or maybe you want to get your testosterone, your estrogen, and a couple of other things. Uh, load all those labs into your cart and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT10 to save 10% off all those labs. But let's say you're not sure where to start. Head over to MerrickHealth.com slash POWERPROJECT and get the Power Project panel. That's going to cover everything you need to know including a uh, consultation with a client care coordinator uh, that comes free with that and use promo code power project to save $101 off of that entire bundle. Again, MerrickHealth.com links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. <laughs> and uh, for good luck, you may as well check out the Bo Jackson rookie card. <laughs> I, love, I used to watch Bo Jackson highlights all the time. What's the deal, man? He was unbelievable, right? Freak of nature. Breaking the bat over his knee. Complete maniac. So, dude, I, you know, when I go on your Instagram, you know, mm-hmm. I think other people, they see your lifts and stuff. But what I've been noticing, especially more recently, maybe the last, maybe like the last year, is, man, your style. Your your shoe game is increasing. <laughs> like, shit looks like it's going good, man. What's going on with these shoes? You got a lot of different shoes? Yeah. So, I mean, I've always been into that kind of stuff. Um, I think over the it's past- It's fun, right? Yeah. Over the past couple of years, I've just been a lot more comfortable just kind of showcasing that to, mm. the, to, the, to the followers and all that. Do you have a shit ton of shoes or it's not like too crazy? I wouldn't say it's too crazy. <laughs> like I have like a little studio or like yeah. a little study that has like all my shoes in there, but it's not like, it's not like to the level where it's like it would fill up this whole room, mm. you know, but that, I mean, that would be like the goal coming up. What's your, uh, what's your like, eat? what's your eating like nowadays? You mentioned earlier to me that you uh, are looking to go into some bodybuilding coming Ooh. up in maybe a year or so. <laughs> so I'd like to know how you're eating now. Yeah, because how you're gonna eat coming up is gonna stink. Compared <laughs> yeah, to eating for body, eating for powerlifting. Yeah, it's funny because I've done I've done a show before. Oh, like okay. Before, like I did a show when I was just getting into powerlifting, and I wanted to try it out, but I didn't take it seriously mm. enough to like kind of like give myself the best opportunity to see what I would actually like on the stage. So I mean, now I've gotten a lot better, just like with experience, because you want to eat to be good at powerlifting too. Mm. Um, so I mean, I eat pretty clean. I clean like I, I probably eat. your cameraman's here is that true does he eat clean no no Not, does he does russ eat clean uh, trying to get some verification kind of, i mean like to a decent extent, it's, <laughs> oh now we're starting to walk it's back been, no, no, it's, it's been it's been bad of late just because like we've been doing a lot oh, okay, of traveling okay okay but for the I'm, most i mean part, clean-ish you know yeah, what i mean clean-ish, yeah, clean-ish. Yeah. clean-ish. I, try to, I try to cook as much as my meals as i possibly can yeah yeah so I would say probably like, I mean, out of the day, even if I do eat out, I eat like whole food. So I would get like rice and chicken mm. or um, 
maybe steak and potatoes or something like that. What's your uh, what's your background? Like, uh, what's your sports background? Did you play a lot of sports growing up? I played football. Yeah, football. So um, I did football, a little bit of track, but mostly like the main focus was football. Running back? Up. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, he'd be hard to bring down with those big ass legs. Yeah. <laughs> that was the thing. Like I was super short to the ground and then like my legs were like a lot bigger than some of the other. Kind of like Barry played. Sanders back in the day. That guy had huge legs. No, nah, I wasn't. I wasn't shifty like that. But were you, are you pretty quick, pretty fast? Um, I'm quick and then it's more so power. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then like I used that a lot to transfer into the weight room. So like I would, that's kind of like my transition to powerlifting. I used to love training in the weight room. That was the same thing for me. I played uh, played some football, and I would always say that I was lifting for football, but really I think like football just got me excited to lift, and I yeah. loved lifting more so than anything else. That's literally what happened to me. <laughs> so I was like in college, and I had walked on, on to uh, the football team at Texas Tech, and I was like, damn, like this shit is getting in the way of me lifting weights. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, hold on, wait a minute, like, I like lifting weights more than I like playing football. That like, doesn't make sense. Mm. So I ended up cutting out football and just like sticking to the weights. Is yeah, that how Texas you like team. got into like lifting itself or um, did something else happen? I would say so. I feel like mm. earlier on in my, I, I was very active as a child. Like I would work out specifically just to look like, this sounds stupid, but look like characters in the animes I would watch. No, so like, that's not stupid at yeah, all. Yeah, like Dragon Ball Z, like Goku and shit. That's exactly I used to, what Insema talks about all the time. Yeah, that's I dope. used to literally look like, I want to look like Goku. And like he would, they would show the training that Goku would do. <laughs> and I'm like. Now it's making sense on why he's so strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh shit, I just got to do that to get like bigger. Like mm -hmm. you'd show Goku doing push-ups and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll go do that by myself. What's so. up with the, was it beans or something like that? He would eat something. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, the sensu beans? Sensu beans. Yeah, yeah. to heal him. Not yeah. allowed to take those in the no. IPF. <laughs> yeah. I'm not with the IPF anymore, so that's good. There you go. Yeah, yeah. what happened? Uh, something happened with like the USAPL or something. The IPF doesn't recognize it or something. I don't know what's going on. So it was it was confusing. So for the most part, I think the easiest way to boil it down is to like the USAPL wanted to do a different style of testing um, uh. and have their own rules and regulations to that. And the IPF didn't recognize that. And like, you got to follow these rules mm. or, you know, we're going to have to kick you guys out. So what do you think of uh, some of the testing and stuff? Like, do you feel that, I know you competed in a drug-tested federation for a long time. Yeah. Do you think it was pretty, like, even? Do you think it was pretty well, like, the testing was done pretty well to the point where a lot of the athletes were natural? I know a lot of people listening are going to be like, there's no way. Like, tested doesn't mean, yeah, um, yeah. What's, what's the term? Tested doesn't mean. Um, it doesn't mean you're natural, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah tested yeah, yeah. doesn't mean drug-free or some yeah. shit. Yeah, there right. we go. Yeah. There we go. I, I, I personally disagree with that. Um they their testing method is they could pull up on you at any point in time mm. and test you so like i have to give them a whereabouts of where i'm going to be so let's say i'm here i have to like let them know that hey i'm going to be in sacramento mm. doing this podcast yeah. at from like this point to this point and it's not and it's also not the usapl like really like running the test it's it's like a wada thing yeah right? wada yeah right so it's a private i think that that's always like the confusing thing and then people get mad because they're like oh the usapl has all these particular rules and stuff and they don't really understand it's not they're just following the structure yeah. that is done by wada which also um is the same drug protocol that the olympics follow yeah. right yeah but then people would argue it's all corrupted at the same time yeah too. they got their people they want to win yeah um yeah i mean we've we've uh we do dove into uh some stuff that was said about Ray Williams um, because I think they talked about him on Joe Rogan mm -hmm. and they talked about how he has the most muscle mass mm -hmm. out of anybody uh, they've ever tested when they did a body fat test. Yeah. Um, what was interesting about that is Joe Rogan, I don't think he's aware that Big Ray is a drug tested athlete. So yeah, we yeah, talked yeah. about it on this show as well. And I was like, I think they're missing out on the fact that I can't say for sure that he's drug free, but he's been drug tested a lot, and yeah. you know, turns out that he, you know, he's one of the greatest uh, powerlifters of all time, too. Yeah, I think people don't realize too. Like, if you wanted to be, if you wanted to take drugs while you're in the USAPL and you're like a top tier athlete, mm -hmm. there's so many different things that you'd have to like go through. And there's so many hurdles you'd have to go through in It'd order just to make be that a giant happen. pain in the ass. Yeah, it's like it's just too much. And the thing is, is like like I said earlier, they could pull up right now and require that I take a test. So it's like if I'm running shit, then it's going to pop for the most part. Have you seen some people like make some crazy gains where you're like, mm. uh, like maybe on the world level, not necessarily just here in the United States? Not really. Not to, 
Like for they the come most back part, every year and the gains are nah, like re- nah. they're reasonable. I would say for the most part, what usually happens is that there's an athlete that's injured and like mm. they don't really tell the public yeah. and they have maybe a couple of shit meets during that year. They heal up and then come back and have like phenomenal meets, but nothing to where it's just like, oh, you're like watching, you're like, oh, this guy's getting fucking yeah. strong. Yeah. Do you, is that something that interests you to go to the quote unquote dark side? Yeah. Mm, no. I, I've like my whole time lifting, it's never been something that's in my mind. Like, it's not like you're not big enough and it's not like you're not strong (laughs) enough. You know what I mean? I would say, like, I've never sat down and said, like, oh, I wonder what it would be like to be on steroids. I mean, like, of course, like maybe here and there, it's just like, oh, like, I, you know, maybe a quick thought, but it's never been like a thing that I think past that initial thought, like Mm. the steps that it would take to kind of do that. Yeah, um, interesting. Like when I when I was a kid, um, when I started lifting, a lot of the gyms that I went to, even when I was like 15, 16, and a lot of the competitions that I went to, even though they were ADFPA, which used to be uh, the USAPL before the USAPL <laughs> became yeah. the USAPL, um, a lot of those competitions I went to, you know, all they would do is like, they would use like a lie detector test. Yeah. And I kind of just even <laughs> knew back then that like, dude, like guys were just like, it was just too much, you yeah. know, it wasn't just the strength. It was like the look of a lot of the athletes. And I was uh-huh. like, eh, I was like, I think these guys are doing something a little different. And so when I was young, I was always like, when I'm old enough and I can make the decision and I live by myself and I can make my own choices when I'm an adult. I'm going to I'm going to definitely heavily consider using some anabolic steroids because I think it's kind of cool. Like mm-hmm. I like yeah. the I like the look. I like the uh, I like that it uh, increases uh, you know the the odds of you being able to like lift a little bit more weight and stuff like that. So that's mm. the route I went. Yeah. Did yeah. it Did it make you feel, uh, Mark? Did it make you feel like I don't know, like you were taking it even more serious because you were willing to go that far? Yeah, for sure. And I never thought of it as cheating because I wasn't trying to compete. Like I I hopped out of that Mm. federation. As soon as I made a decision years later, um, I was much older and I I never competed in a drug tested federation Mm. while I was on drugs. Like I kind of think that that's shit. I definitely Mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't do that. But in powerlifting, it's actually kind of interesting. Powerlifting, bodybuilding, um, you can make a choice. You don't have to, you don't have to, uh, you don't necessarily have to take drugs. You can go to federations or organizations where they are testing pretty rigorously, it mm. seems like, and you can at least go into something that you feel a little more comfortable about. And if you wanted to be natural and you just wanted to see what kind of splash you can make against people that are even are yeah. enhanced, then you can go head to head with those uh, with them as well, which I think is actually really kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've had a lot of friends that competed for many years in federations that uh, – were not drug tested and they were, they were natural athletes and they just, they, they kind of liked that. They're like, I don't care if I get my ass kicked a little bit here and there. It's kind of fun just knowing that I can hang with some of these guys that are taking some of these other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's like the, I know a lot of people have wanted me to compete USBA um, and in test untested. And that's like the next goal probably for next year. Like I want to compete with those guys. I wanted to compete against John, but that's, uh-huh. <laughs> he he took off the last two years. It's, it, there's no way like to kind of like get in that realm. What's the deal with that guy, John Hack? I, I don't fucking know, man. Yeah. It's 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 ridiculous. I just remember like whenever I first started powerlifting because we we're we were in the same weight class. I was like, okay, who's the top dog in this mm-hmm. class right now? And I looked and it looked up the name and it said John Hack Wisconsin. I was like, what the fuck is a John Hack? And I, I was like, I was like, you're telling me the strongest person in this class is in fucking Wisconsin. All right. I was like, bullshit. So I checked up his Instagram and you know, lo and behold, this guy was lifting crazy. This was like 2016. Mm. He was lifting crazy weight. And I was like, damn, it would be dope to share a platform with this guy. But then like just leading up to I think 2017, that's when he left. After he won his IPF Worlds, that's when he left and decided to go the untested route. Mm. So I missed that opportunity. We had uh, Ben mm-hmm. uh, Pollock on the podcast recently, and Ben yeah. was like, he's the reason I'm on the juice. Because <laughs> yeah, he said John Hack kicked his ass in a, uh, in a, in a tested uh, competition. And yeah. he was like, I'm, I'm out of this. I'm going to go get on some gear and see what I can do. I would have I loved to compete against John. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Yeah, he's a dog. I, I like the way um, he has like a certain – He's I, don't, I mean, you guys have met him. He's very mm-hmm. – um, He's very, uh, I don't know how to explain it. He's very particular. He's very, like, yeah. calm and chill. Mm. But he's also, like, a monster at the same time, and he's super competitive. So, like, if he sees me hit something, this is way back. If he saw me hit, like, a squat, he'll try to double it or, like, mm. you know, do something <laughs> like that. So yeah, I don't think the world's ever seen anybody quite like John Hack. I've never seen anything like it personally. I mean, there was a while there where Big Ray was on a crazy tear that yeah. I'd never quite seen before either. 
Um, but what John Hack is doing right now, I, I got to say, like, I mean, Larry Wheels was smashing that shit too, and he still does, and he's still like uh, insanely strong. But John Hack is lifting heavy every week, and he competes yeah. often, yeah, and he just keeps up in the stakes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know what the hell's going on with the guy. No, nah, and if you look at him, his leverage is they're not power lift. They don't look, he doesn't look like a power lift. He just mm-hmm. looks like a, a jacked dude. guy. Yeah, like still waters run deep. Like he's so chill, but it's like, dude, there's there's a monster down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so somewhat low hanging fruit, and I, I know you're sick and tired of it, but I'm bringing it up because Encima has to deal with this shit all the time too. Uh-huh. But the fake natty claims, like uh-huh. how do you deal with all that shit nowadays? No, I don't, I don't care. It doesn't bother. Like I think when I first started, it bothered me. But like now that I'm like, I know that I'm not taking mm-hmm. anything. Why? Why should it bother me? Like that's your opinion. You know, mm-hmm. it's not. It's not fact. Yeah, that makes and, sense. And yeah. like what we were talking earlier, which I, I do want to get into, like the knees over toe stuff. But mm-hmm. like you heard of of Ben Patrick, but like he wasn't really on your radar because it's like, well, or do you have knee problems? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No. Are you still squatting a shit ton of weight? Yes. Yeah. So it's like, why would you even want to bother when everything is going so well already? Yeah. 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 So I mean, like I said, it's. I think it's funny because um, what's that guy's name that he he does like the fake natty stuff? He has like a very oh, like high pitched voice. The Greg Doucette. Yeah, he actually <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah he called me out. He's like, this guy is a natty. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, that was <laughs> really good. <laughs> oh shit, yeah. Russell or high. I was like, I was like, okay, and I made a response video, and then he ended up like retracting what he said. So it was just like. I just approached it the thing as like that's entertainment for him, but like yeah, right. like I'm not sitting I don't post stuff on social media to mm-hmm. kinda convince people that oh I'm not natty. Like what you take from my content is what you take from my content. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, you're probably not even really talking about it much. I mean, you just com- that's what kind of the way I look at it. You compete in a drug tested federation and you do your thing your way and it's like you're gonna get those comments here yeah. and there. Like people are gonna people are gonna like warp their minds to believe whatever they want to believe. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm doing everything I can to show you guys that I'm natty, but I mean if it's not enough for you, then you know, it's all I'm not gonna like trip about it anymore. Mm-hmm. It's just like, okay, like you think I'm not natty. All right. How did you um how did you, I guess, like transform your body? Because like when you were younger, when you first started lifting, were you kind of a skinnier kid? Were you a little bit thick? Like what did you kind of look like before you got into lifting? I would say it was like more so in between. Um I don't know. It's it's kind of I think honestly it sucks to say but it's like genetics just mm-hmm. the way my body's built. Um I put like I work out very 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 hard. Um but I just think like my muscle insertions and everything that's just it just comes down to genetics of how everything fills out. When you were a kid were you like a little bit muscular? Yeah, without? I was yeah, I was a little bit mus- uh, a little bit more muscular. Like junior high I was definitely more muscular than like all the other children. Mm-hmm. Um same thing with high school too. Like I was definitely a lot more built. Yeah. How about, uh, yeah, so like in your, like, I don't know, parents or like somebody in your family, like super jacked as well? Or, nah, nah, no, no, it's, but <laughs> also too, like if you saw like my brothers, I have like two brothers, mm-hmm. if you saw them, you're like, oh, if you worked out, you'd be jacked. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah. Okay. How so, did, oh, go ahead. No, no, it's just, like I said, it's like Nigerian genetics, West African genetics at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Was it, uh, was it ever like a struggle or you put on weight and strength, uh, fairly easy in the beginning? It's kind of hard because I feel like everything's perspective. Right, like right, right. I see other people that are a lot bigger than me, and they do a lot less than I do, mm. um, and they they get jacked. But I, like I said, like I I try to put in a lot of work, and I try to exhaust myself. Mm. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell that I put it on easily or not yeah. because I've just put in a lot of work since the beginning. Yeah, what do you think people are are missing out on when it comes to just chasing strength? Um, we have a lot of guys that come into this gym like every weekend, you know, they're prepping for meets like on a regular basis, uh-huh. but like we don't have a, a Russell Ori here. Like, uh-huh. we, you know, we're not even close right now. So like, what do you think people are kind of like overlooking or like, what is it that they're doing wrong and why they're not building like world-class strength? I feel like a lot of people just, I don't know if we're, if we're talking specifically powerlifting, mm-hmm. um, at least like the federation I compete in. I feel like people actually don't work hard enough. Mm. Like they they play around too much, they jack around too much. They don't take like the actual training um aspect of what you do seriously. They come in think they could just dick around and make gains. Yeah. You know? Um when I'm inside of the gym and I kinda like look around at other people, like I get taking your time between sets, but make sure your workout's purposeful. Mm. Like actually be present in the workout. Don't you know, don't fuck around. There's no reason that's why you should be taking like thirty minutes in between <laughs> sets and like hanging out with your friends and doing all this, that, and the third. So I just think that people just actually need to work harder. And I think people that come from different sports, like I came from football, so I understand what like what working hard looks like and what pushing your body to the brink looks like. Yeah, you gotta push pretty damn hard. You gotta um yeah. you gotta kind of force it, but it gets to be a little complicated because 
um, I think when you're talking about working harder, you're not really talking about trying weights that you can't actually lift. No, no, no. no. And you're not talking about like just going heavier and like saying F the form and all that stuff. No. You're, you're, what you're referring to is just like some sort of efficiency, yeah. you know, and it'd probably be a good idea if you're having trouble with efficiency to set up some type of schedule and to have some sort of plan going into the gym yeah. rather than being like, oh, you know, if, if you're somebody that can't just like audible and lift, then you're going to want to have a plan and you can kind of say, you know, when I'm done with my main exercise, I'm going to do these two exercises back and forth. Mm -hmm. When I'm done with those two exercises, I'm going to do these two exercises back and forth and then yeah. I'm out. And after you're warmed up or something, you know, that should be like a 45 minute workout, depending yeah. on like mm -hmm. what you're lifting for the day. If you're lifting really heavy, it might take a little longer. Yeah. Cause I mean, when I'm inside of the gym, I get pretty selfish just because I know like the amount of work that I have to put in in order to like progress. Mm -hmm. So sometimes like I'll have friends in the gym and they know like, okay, Russ is working out. Like he's not going to go out of his way to talk to me or like, I, I actually don't make eye contact with my friends when they come mm -hmm. in. I'm just mm -hmm. kind of like, what's up, bro? And just like kind of look away, mm -hmm. you know? So um, yeah, I just feel like a lot of some powerlifters these days, like just need to do a better job of just being a lot more intentful during the workout. Yeah. Do you ease up a bit after your like main lift is done? Do you get a little yeah. more casual? <laughs> I know like it's like uh, popping your cherry, right? Every, every time you go to the gym, it's like you're, you're walking in there with like your butthole kind of puckered. <laughs> and then uh, you get your first couple lifts in and you might have like a little um, anxiety or just extra focus on like, I got to do that. I got to do that heavy set yeah. of three, man. Like. I hope this jackass who asked me the same fucking question every single time I see him doesn't ask me the same question again yeah. and try to stop me for 30 minutes because I'm on a mission. I got to do oh this set God. of three. Yeah. No, that's that's a perfect way to explain it. Like, I literally come in. I'm like, Bro, just just give me this top set. Like, yeah, just, yeah. I just need a single or I need, like, this top set of, like, like a heavy set of three like, or something oh. like that. Yeah. Then I'm just like, woo. Hey, what's up, dog? Hey, what's happening? Like, you're all happy. Yeah, and yeah shit. you're just chilling. He's like, so. oh, I thought he was in a bad mood. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have that happen so much, man. Yeah. Do you work with a coach? Yeah. Yeah. Joey Flex. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay. Well, yeah. How long have you been that? working with Joey Flex? <sighs> man, it's been like four or five years now. Mm. Yeah. I think Joey Flex, I think Joey Flex might have gotten into powerlifting because of me. I think so. I don't know. I, maybe, maybe I made that up. I, you just said it on record, I, so it's, I mean, it's good I to I feel go. like a lot of people got in because of you. I, I yeah, used to I think, watch your videos. Oh, sick. Yeah, yeah. You don't watch them anymore? What's wrong? No, I'm saying. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I don't really make them anymore, so it's okay. <laughs> I used to watch like your personal videos when you like upload and all that. I used, oh, to keep with, yeah, I used to keep in touch with all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot less... Uh, a lot less going on in fitness and in powerlifting. I mean, now there's a lot of there's a lot of YouTube channels. You have a successful YouTube channel. Um, what is something that helped your YouTube channel catch fire? Just your strength, you think, or no, nah, definitely a combination of, of a couple other things too. No, nah, so I feel like for me and my and my um my social media, it's just my personality. Mm. Um, I don't. I just kind of be myself. I feel like there's a lot of strong people out there in the mm -hmm. world. Actually, um, there's a lot of people that are strong as shit. Uh, that, that was like an ass shot of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part, I just kind of relate to people on a personal level to where I'm just myself and they're just Damn, like, dude, you're thick. <laughs> He's fucking jacked, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I just try my best to make sure that I just uh, kind of showcase my personality, what I'm interested in. You're going to do great in bodybuilding. I, I can't, can't wait, wait dude. I'm, I'm so, so excited. Yeah, I'm yeah. fired up for it. Yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of strong people on social media, but they, like when you talk to them, they're just, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the type of mindset that it takes to be strong is a little bit, you know, being strong or being a good bodybuilder, um, it's a lot of like repeated effort of doing the mm -hmm. same thing. It's, it's a lot of patience. Uh, and so sometimes some of the people uh, in, the, in those sports, they're sometimes kind of like boring, yeah. for lack of a better term, not yeah. trying to offend anybody. No. But that's, that's kind of what I've seen as well is like uh, these people are, they're very monotone. They're very yeah. like chill, docile type mm -hmm. people. Like they're not going to go out and like tear up the town and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. They're just, powerlifters usually aren't those kind of people. They don't really drink. Um, I mean, you might see some guys smoke a little bit here and there, but like there's not a lot of, although there are guys that, you know, utilize performance enhancing drugs, there's not a lot of like recreational drugs because yeah. you can't really mess around with that stuff. Uh, that often and be successful at it. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just I just showcase my personality. It's it's weird because it's like you almost make the camera your best friend in mm -hmm. a sense because mm -hmm. it's like I'm able to talk to this camera so I'm talking to like the homies. Um, so a lot of people, you put a camera in their face, they just can't yep. talk. Yep. Mm. Maybe they do have that personality, but like when the camera comes on, it's just like, 
like uh, you get that trait from uh, maybe a family member, like your mom or dad. Are they pretty like talkative or anything like that? No, it's it's interesting because I feel like social media has helped me kind of like come more out of my shell. Mm. I'm actually a very reserved person. I don't, you know, I, I'm I'm very like yes, ma'am, no sir type of guy. Um, but then like as I started doing more social media, it's kind of helped me just like connect and talk to more people because like you're kind of forced in a way to mm -hmm. like associate yourself or just like you know talk to people oh, meet so, people and throughout doing that it's like be a lot more more comfortable on camera so normally you're not nah. real outgoing or no nah, my i'm i'm a recluse damn near i like i'm a homebody i like to chill yeah um but like i can it's not like turning on a personality but it's like i can show more of myself when it's, it's just a me part of you yeah it's a part of me but I normally don't show uh, show that part of me like to most people when I first meet them. Yeah, earlier um, you were hanging out in one of our offices and you were getting some work done. Mm. Um, what work are you doing? I've been, you know, it's like work that I shouldn't be doing <laughs> <laughs> in a sense, just because like um, I'm trying to scale a little bit um, my business and it's just like I'm still handling roles that I probably shouldn't be putting myself into. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just like stuff like that. Like um, we were taught, we were having like a, a, a pop-up event um, in Philadelphia, then like a month. So I'm like figuring out like hotel, like this, that, and the third, mm. like all that kind of stuff. It's just like, I shouldn't be doing that, but I am just because it's, it's hard for me to let people in and like handle different mm. tasks. Yeah. And so like, what, what is the company? Like what, what do you guys provide or what? Yeah. So on? it's just, it's, it's my, um, company called the Get Better Today brand. Like we sell clothes, um, mm, okay. merch and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you had that for? Um, three years now. Yeah. Cool. Damn. Any advice for him to help let people take over jobs that he shouldn't be doing? Yeah. Um, so, uh, number one is, um, start the process of like trying to like search for people a little bit mm -hmm. try to interview people and take your time with it. You know, yeah. don't, don't just, it's really easy to be like, Oh, my cousin will handle it or whatever. It's <laughs> like, you know, like then you might've trapped yourself. Cause like, how do you tell your cousin? Like, yo, you really suck at your <laughs> yeah, job. Yeah. <laughs> I told you 17 times, you know, um, so, you know, take your time in, in, in looking for somebody and make sure they fit. And, uh, I would even explain that to him. We had somebody mm -hmm. come in today, uh, that we, we believe is going to be like editing our podcast stuff. And I just told him, I said, we're, this might take like three, four months, you know, for us to hit our stride and to see how it works for you and see how it works for us. Mm -hmm. Cause, uh, we didn't officially like hire him yet. So, yeah, just take your time with that process and um, ownership is a big thing. So take ownership of if the person didn't do a good job, it's still your fault. It's like yeah. reflective of you. It's like being on a football team. Yeah. Um, the quarterback throws the interception. You didn't fumble the ball, but the other team has the ball. And it's yeah. it's part of a team responsibility. In this case, this is your, your business. So a, a really important thing to understand in business is that Nobody in in the history of the world has ever had a great business by themselves. Like yeah. you need to have some other folks helping you out. And there might be some businesses that have done well with like two or three or four people, but uh, for the most part, like you need some good people around. It looks like you got a good uh, guy with you to handle your uh, camera work and your um, photography and yeah. editing and that kind of stuff. So that's great. Um, but the last part, last piece of this is to. Uh, here's the, the thing that I try to have for myself is if I hand something over to somebody, I think that they can run the ball better than me. I think they can do mm. a better job. So I think most people are like, I'm going to give this to this dude and it's fourth and one and he's going to fumble <laughs> it. Like, I know he's going to fumble it. Yeah. And then sure enough, like, because you got no confidence in the guy, he fumbles it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. people are going to make mistakes and you got to give them their leeway. And they're going to do things differently. So if you ask somebody to make like a post on social media, mm -hmm. you'd be like, man, I would never talk that way. Like that is <laughs> whack. I don't, can't understand what the hell happened there or whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, they might just have, you know, some different language. But again, that goes back on you. Maybe you didn't communicate everything that needed to be communicated. Yeah. You want to make sure you iron that stuff out. But yeah, that's been probably the most valuable piece for mm -hmm. me has been like, I don't know anything about what Andrew's doing over there. I know he does something. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out too, but. Oh, shit. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe <laughs> we should find somebody else. Well, <laughs> how about this? I'll find somebody. Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Though? Like, yeah. it's like, have confidence that, uh, 
because you're 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 a lifter at heart, you know, yeah. and you have your passions and you have your skill set of your business, and you'll be good at those things. And uh, nobody else will most likely be as passionate about your business than you uh, will be. But there is somebody who understands a spreadsheet better than you. There yeah. is somebody who understands shipping and receiving and all mm. the other bullshit that goes on yeah. in, in business. Like, wait, like I would hope so, right? You yeah, hope yeah. that there's people out there that understand that stuff better. So, um, and and uh, la the last thing too is, uh, and Andrew has said this before. I think people give up hope on stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if Andrew's just like, man, my back hurts. Like my back's mm -hmm. always hurt. My back's hurt since I was a kid. It's always going to hurt. It doesn't matter if these new people show me this or show me that. It's always going to hurt. Well, then he's always going to be in pain. Yeah. You know, so just understand that, like, it might be a little bit of process hiring, firing people. And, yeah. Um, and so just uh, be be really uh, patient with it. Yeah. It was funny because there's certain things you said in there. I'm just like, yeah, I'm struggling to, like, I'm, I'm getting better, like, towards the tail end of last year. That was for sure something I was struggling with. It's like, I'll give something, I'll give someone a task. And it's like, I feel like I could do that task better than them, but I'm just giving it to them because I can't do everything at once. Mm -hmm. So I would run into the issue of just like, why are, like, why are, why are we doing this? Like, this doesn't make yeah. any sense. Like, I disagree with that. Instead of just allowing people to just like do their job. That's probably part of your personality. You probably, yeah. uh, not, not an egotistical thing, but you probably literally feel that you can do stuff uh, mm -hmm. a little better than people. Like, yeah. just like in the gym, right? Someone yeah. does a squat, you're like, I could do that. I think I could do it with more weight. I think yeah. I could do more reps. It's like uh, the athlete that's in you, you yeah. know? So it's not a negative thing at all. It's just uh, something that you, you know, you you want to try to pull back from a little bit to mm -hmm. just understand, like, somebody else is going to do way better job with this paperwork and yeah. some of this, like, BS stuff. And my time would be way better off, you know, working on these other things. Yeah, the main thing I try to tell everyone now, it's like, I'm just a lifter, man. Like, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm literally just a lifter. Like you guys execute y'all's roles. And like, I want to make the main thing, the main thing. Um, that, I think LeBron James did a good job of saying something like that. He's like, mm. I'm the basketball player. And then I put my, my people in positions that could like kind of help me mm. get the patch and projects that I want to get off the ground. Yeah. One of the, the, just like most amazing things I ever heard Mark even say he was, um, so his wife, Andy was like, Mark, we got to go take this business call like right now. It's like, mm -hmm. okay. And he keeps going on another set. I think <laughs> we're doing dumbbell bench. She comes out again and she's like, Mark, like now. And he just looks at the camera and he's like, the only reason why they want me on that phone call is because of what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. He's like, so that phone call can wait. And he does another <laughs> set. And I was just like, That's hard. Bruh, like that is That's hard. so sick. So That's you're, you're on the right path, dude. Yeah. That's yeah. Hard. Do you have any, anybody out like, that you can like reach out to like anybody guiding you when it comes to like the business side of things yeah for sure it's i got a lot of friends i mean like the circle that i came up with on social media um they all have like their own successful businesses and they're all doing their own uh things in their own um great way so it's like i have a lot of friends i can reach out to it's like yo bro i have do, do you need uh do you have a lawyer or like do you have a guy i can talk to about this like a lot of different stuff mm. yeah yeah you need all that stuff it's yeah. uh when you when you start lifting and stuff and you get way into it and you become something in lifting, it's not anything that you ever think would be yeah. even anything you'd be doing. Yeah, yeah. But now here you are mm -hmm. <laughs> here you are doing it. And it's like um and, and you know, maybe you don't have to understand all the different aspects of everything, but mm -hmm. somebody does. Somebody in your organization or company does need to know it all. Um, previously, before you had your videographer and photographer, were you doing everything yourself? Yeah, I was doing everything myself. So, like, my time in the gym would just be, man, like, five hours, <laughs> like, minimum. Because I'm sitting here, mm. the type of videos I would upload were, like, vlogs. So, mm -hmm. like, literally just going through my whole day. So, like, I would get different angles of my workout just to make the video look really good. Um, and then I would go home and edit. So, like, my day would be my day would be ending at like three in the morning mm -hmm. and I was doing something where I was like uploading cause Casey Neistat, mm -hmm. I don't yeah, know if yeah. you guys, he had like Absolutely. the, the daily vlogs. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna do the daily vlogs too. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, gonna try to keep up with him. Yeah, I'm gonna keep up with him. And I, I mean, I went pretty, I went for a pretty long time, but I mean, that shit was draining, but I like it because it taught me just like, number one, like how much effort it takes for him to get the mm -hmm. content out. And then number two, just understanding like, okay, like this is what he does on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I, I was doing just like uh, one video a week, um, when I was doing Sarmageddon, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but, mm -hmm. um, 
it made me have so much more respect for Mark because I remember he was doing a, by himself uh, on his phone editing and publishing <laughs> a video every day. I don't even remember what it was for. Well, I did a carnivore for 100 days. There you I go. I posted a video Fuck. every day for 100 days. I've edited thousands of videos because mm-hmm. like yeah. I just would film them on my phone. Um, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing, but I just like threw them together. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it takes forever oh, it's terrible yeah. Yeah. yeah and then you have shit where like maybe like the files are corrupted or, oh, oh yeah go for it yeah it won't upload or yeah. whatever and, i had a recent thing um probably like two weeks ago i filmed everything in slow motion so like <laughs> oh, the, oh, the yeah. audio the audio is <laughs> fucked <laughs> so i'm just like sitting there and, and doing like my camera guy he goes yeah i, and I asked my question I'm like hey like if you film something in slow motion can you still like have the audio in there he's like Oh no, the audio's fucked. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. And cool. I just like fucking go like that, bro. I was like, filmed like half of my day in slow motion. Like, you just got to make like a super cool, like slow motion and hype track. And that's what he did. Yeah. So, <sighs> that's what you're wild. like, damn, that thing, that shit was going to go, <laughs> <laughs> that shit was going to go viral. That was it. <laughs> what has been some of your most popular videos? What gets the most attention? I feel like it's the stupid shit. <laughs> like, it's mostly the stuff that, like, I think about in, like, three seconds, and then I just post. Mm. I'm like, oh, this would be funny, and I post it, and it ends up going viral. Um, I feel like the most popular things is, like, anytime I lift with, like, a girl around, mm-hmm. it goes viral. Um, <laughs> some yeah. of the, yeah, some of the more stupid stuff that I filmed. Um, has yeah, man, our, our audience is, like, hungry. Because, <laughs> 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 like, I know, like, on some of my stuff, like, we don't even have a lot of girls in the gym, but if there's a girl that walks by... People will be like, uh, nine minutes, 23 seconds. You yeah, know, they're, man. they're like, yo. Oh, and they'll like just freak out. And sometimes you're like, uh, that was a guy with long hair, but whatever <laughs> you're into, you know what I mean? They'll be like, the ass on well, so and so. You're like, whoa, everybody just relax. Yeah. Well, that dude was caked up. So it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Dudes will go out of the way and find the girl. And oh, like, cause yeah. I've had like my gym manager, she's been like in a lot of my videos. Um, and <laughs> people will like will go and find her personal IG and hit her up. It's like, yo. I, for, I forgot the name they called her, like Peruvian. Oh, shit. Yeah. So you got your own gym, too. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. That's sick. Yeah. It's been a, it's been like a dream come true. How long have you had your own gym for? Um, So it was actually supposed to open up 2020, but that's like, I. <laughs> funny story. As soon as I acquired the space, mm. the pandemic hit mm. like a oh, month later. Shit. And then during that pandemic, it was impossible to find anything. Mm. Like no equipment. You couldn't find shit. So all of 2020, we just... I just had to bite that bullet. And then um, we opened up last year, I think it was June. Yeah, June 26th. So we've been open for like six, seven months now. Um, It's kind of like a powerlifting gym, kind of a a little super training-esque, a little bit barbell brigade-ish type thing. Yeah, so very specific. It's specific to powerlifting, but if you're experienced enough, you get a full um, bodybuilding workout in as well. Oh, sick. Yeah. Damn. And then earlier, you know, I was like, oh, you're still training at Alpha Elite. You know, like, now I got my own gym and I was like, shit, I wasn't even sure if that was yours. Yeah. Which is dope. If if you're cool with it saying, you know, on air, like why, yeah. why do you want to kind of keep that like an almost like an unknown type thing? Um, let's say maybe one day I fall off, like maybe this shit's not hidden for me no more. Like the gym will be able to sound on itself. So yeah. it's not reliant upon me Perfect. to constantly push content out to make it pop in. So it's just like, I want the gym to exists in its own separate entity because mm-hmm. i remember when i was talking about creating a gym people were like oh call it the russell Wool gym or like the get better mm-hmm. today gym i'm just like hell no <laughs> i don't want to do that shit like i want to create just a, a separate thing for myself that people could come and train and have its own community dude that's genius yeah. what do you do to drive people there do you um i spend just spend any advertising money or just people are just aware of it no nah, i literally just train there i post mm-hmm. like all my most mm-hmm. of my training videos are there um and it's gotten to a point where people want to be where I'm at. Um, so people will fly in to train for the weekend and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. And then we we do social media marketing. Um, mm-hmm. So we post stuff on TikTok. We've had a couple of lifters, like, come in from TikTok. And they're just like, oh, like, oh, this gym is so cool. I saw it on TikTok. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like great. Like, You're like, huh? Really? <laughs> yeah. I have this full-blown conversation with this guy. He was a power lifter. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm just getting into lifting. And this, that, and the third. And he's like, oh, so what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm a power lifter too. And he's like, um, he's like, yeah, I found this gym on TikTok, and you know, it's just, it's just amazing. I was like, yeah, mm. man, and it made me happy because I'm like, that's exactly it's what I want. Working, yeah, yeah. So on this podcast, we love talking about habits, daily yeah. habits, and that sort of thing. Do you have? I mean, I'm pretty sure we we can kind of uh, assume some of the good habits: good sleep, nutrition, mm. uh, obviously consistency in the gym. But do you have any habits that maybe are outside of that? Like, are you reading every day? Are you journaling or anything like that? Nah. So I'm actually. Ex- 
getting to that point, like my, I feel like the last year I've just kind of gotten away from my routine. Um, I used to have a routine, but not anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I do want to get into journaling, um, mm -hmm. or at least drawing. Cause I like to draw. Oh shit. So that's like kind of a way I sort of express myself. So it's like maybe spend an hour drawing. Um, I feel like I'm still kind of building that, you know, um, the rest of the stuff is pretty, like you said, mm -hmm. mandatory and standard. Makes sense. Yeah. With uh, your workouts and just with yeah, strength training and fitness in general, like what what does that look like? Do you work out specific times every day? Yeah. And do you have like an eating schedule that kind of goes around that, or are you kind of the kind of person who kind of like wings it a little bit every day? Nah, nah. So I have to work out fasted for the most okay. part. I love working out fasted. So um, I want to say like I probably get to the gym. I want to say my ideal time to get to the gym would probably be nine a.m. ten a.m. Mm. Um, no food. Uh, just like kind of vibing off the pre-workout. Um, and then after that, probably like around, I want to say 12 or 1 p.m., I'll have like my first meal of the day and then get some work done. Probably, yeah, get some work done, head back to the crib and then get my second meal of the day, in, which is like usually enough to get like all my calories in because I eat like really, really big meals. Usually eat about twice a day and then maybe there's like a protein shake or snack yeah. of some kind in there exactly. too. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And then are you tracking or just going off I, of how you feel? I loosely track. Okay. So it's like I kind of keep an idea of like what I'm hitting. The main mm -hmm. thing is making sure I get the protein in. Um, other than that, like right now, not really. But as I get closer and closer to me, I definitely start getting a hold of that. Yeah. What's, uh, what's up with your lifting? What are you doing lifting wise? Like, do you have, um, do you have kind of like a set protocol? I, you, I guess you said you're getting programming from Joey Flex. So mm -hmm. what is what does some of that look like? So, for the most part, um, we're going to be hitting like a single on our. A uh, heavy compound day, so squat, bench, deadlift. Some point in, during the week, I'm gonna hit a heavy single on that. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, it's like working just off of RPE, just kind of like how you feel on the day. So today, you're asking me, you're like, oh, what do you think you're gonna hit on squats? I'm mm -hmm. like, shit, I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it might be a little bit over six, it might be a little over seven. It literally just depends on how I feel when I get under the bar. Rate of perceived exertion, I believe it is, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you're just uh, trying to. I guess uh, give yourself an idea of like just how intense or how hard the yeah. exercise was for the day, and um, how often does that get bumped up to like a nine or a ten? <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Like if I feel I like Joey kind of knows how I train now, so it's like if I feel good, then I'm gonna probably like get up there towards like an actual like mm. true RP max, you know, or RP like ten. And this is just your own judgment call. There's no machine yeah. or anything giving you feedback mm -hmm. or anything. Yeah. It's just you being like, man, I. <laughs> that lift really fucked me over. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's also auto regulation too when you're in the moment because it's like okay, mm -hmm. like I I fucking went balls to the wall in this single. Right. Like let me let me chill a little bit on the back down <laughs> sets. Um, so you just have to develop that experience as a lifter, just coming in and just like okay, like I pushed last week, I pushed too much. Like this week, don't even like have any expectations. Mm -hmm. Like literally, just get the work done and dip on out. Pat Roger family, how's it going? Now we partner with Vertical Meals, owned by the genius bodybuilder Stan the Rhino Efferding. Now Vertical Meals isn't your normal meal prep company. We've talked about the amount of crazy options that they have in terms of the food on their website from the classic monster mash, steak and eggs, just steak, chicken empanadas. But a cool thing they have on their website is called RX Meal Kits. Now, you probably don't know what that is, but if you go to their website and you go to the RX Meal Kits, you can enter in your age, your gender, your height, your weight, if you're trying to gain, maintain, or lose weight, and your activity level. And that calculator is going to spit out meal options and ideas and packages for you for your plan. No other company does this. It's crazy. Stan has thought of everything. So, guys. Check out Vertical Meals, and Andrew, how can they get it? Yes, that's over at verticaldiet.com. And when you guys load up that RX meal kit into your cart, use promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off that entire order. Again, so you're going to get rid of all the guesswork, all the meal prep work, because nobody likes to do that. And you're going to have these meals shipped directly from Stan Efferding's brain straight to your door. Again, verticaldiet.com. Links to them down in the description, as well as the podcast show notes. For some of the um, the less experienced lifters, uh, you know, the, the program calls for a heavy double, heavy single, mm -hmm. and they're not feeling it, and then they can't hit what they maybe were hoping to hit. They get all up in their head. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, I guess I'm going to fucking just throw everything away at this point. <laughs> uh, how, how, I mean, I guess, can you give them advice for like just not making like a total mental case out of I don't know, lifting a plate less. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not that big of a deal, but like, how how, did, how do you do it and how can they do it? So I personally just, I just charge it to the game. 
I, I just kind of like reflect back on like, okay, let's like, is this a consistent trend for yourself? Like, obviously, like you expect more because you've done more before. And like, this is just an isolated event. This is just one day. Um, so I would say for them, just to kind of reflect back on the work that you've put in and then just understand like, bro, this is just one day. Mm -hmm. So just like, let it go. That's the way I look at diet too. Yeah. You know, I look at diet the same way. Like I, I put in a really good effort. I feel like I, I think that for the most point, most part, it's pretty on point. Yeah. And uh, if something goes a little sideways and I eat a little something that's not on plan or maybe even I end up binging, I just, I'm like, okay, well, I probably was robbing myself of too many calories at some uh -huh. point. And the body was like, hey, man, you know, yeah, yeah. we don't like that you're doing this. And yeah. then you just end up eating some ice cream or you end up eating <laughs> yeah. some pizza or something. And you, it's not a big deal. I'm, I'm not going to get like, I'm not going to beat myself up over yeah. it. Yeah. I have a question. Do you feel like that after like you hit like a, big ass like pr lift like you just feel like you have to eat something like <laughs> fatty or i don't know yeah when i when i was hitting some big weights i, I would uh i remember like i would tell my wife you know it'd be like nine or ten o'clock at night and she'd be like going to bed and i'd be like uh i'm gonna go back downstairs and watch tv for a while she'd be like why i'm like i still gotta eat <laughs> yeah because uh, you know that day i did like some heavy deadlifts or heavy squats or something i could kind of like i don't know if it was mental yeah or, or if it was like a literal like internal like feeling that i had but it felt like i needed to eat more yeah because i'll hit like something like like high for myself and i'm like fuck like i'm hungry like, i want to <laughs> and it would be like that for the rest of the day i'm like i have to like feed this hunger it's it's like a weird feeling so yeah. i just want to know if other people your body's just, just trying to grow yeah <laughs> it's like come on bro we just hit a pr let's yeah. go That's what do sick. you do for uh hypertrophy type stuff i know you said that it, it does come a little bit easy for you but like is there like a specific way that you address some of that um i literally just wear like a bodybuilder so like this I a lot of people ask me about the, how i structure my workouts um I go through a full powerlifting session. Mm -hmm. I take five, and then I jump into a full bodybuilding session. So I, like, I train like a pretty generic bodybuilder. You work out for like two hours or something yeah, like that. Probably like a, so, like a power powerlifting for like an hour, and then yeah. bodybuilding for like an hour. Yeah, and I'm I understand like a lot of, not a lot of people have the opportunity to do something like that. Right, but, right. You know, I have the time, so it's just like that's been my training style for the past couple of years now. Well, you didn't always have uh, the luxury of 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 doing that probably right like in the beginning it's probably different for you or or you set your life up around your training so you could do that kind of not really like i remember when i was in college in school like i would just finish all my homework like and just go to the rec and train mm -hmm. for like four hours right so it's just like i feel like you make time for what you truly want at the mm -hmm. end of the day um and i just wanted to lift so badly that i was willing to kind of like make sure i set up my schedule to where i would be able to accomplish that yeah i did the same thing i didn't have any money or anything i just yeah. kept training yeah, I, I was broke. I remember, like, I was eating potatoes every day. <laughs> I, like, I had no money. I, I was using my gas just to get straight to the rec center, and that's it. Like, Sneaking into the gym without yeah. a membership, all that kind of <laughs> shit, yeah. Yeah, I, I love that you're very, like, um, I guess, even keel. Like, you're not, like, uh, no, it was I had to go super hardcore no matter what every single day, or, yeah, you know, yeah. you're not all over the place. Um, where did you adapt that mindset from? Like, again, like, I asked about family and stuff. Like, was there somebody that... I don't know that maybe was into books and they kind of taught you a little bit about like certain, uh, you know, mindsets and that sort of thing. Um, it's kind of tough to say. I feel like if I think about how my parents raised me, they always say that like, you know, if you put the work in, everything will come to you. Mm -hmm. So I just look at it. It's like, let me just keep working. Let me just keep grinding. I don't have to like be super loud about it or like scream about it. This that, and the third, I might do that here and there, but that's not like the, the general way I go about things. Mm -hmm. So just like, just put the work in and, you know, things will work out. Yeah, you're letting the, uh, the numbers talk for you. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking sick. I talk my shit, though, every now and then. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Well, you can, so that's yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, what you're talking about, like the yelling and like getting fired up and some of that uh, that other side that we that we have sometimes or tap into sometimes, that's something that you uh, you get into maybe like 5% of the time. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. it's not that often, but yeah. sometimes you feel like you got to get there and I don't really know why it happens, but sometimes it's like, I kind of always looked at it as if you're trying to, you know, grab a hold of a baseball bat as tight as you can and just beat the hell out of self doubt. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes it, that comes out verbally and you making a bunch of weird noises when you're about to lift because you're like, this is heavy. I'm not really sure if I can yeah. do this today. There's all this shit running through your head. You're like, I was like three pounds lighter today. Like this stupid <laughs> stuff, man. I'll have my normal belt with me. Yeah, like this yeah. belt feels weird. All this stupid stuff starts to seep in. And then the only thing you can think of is like, well, maybe if I just get mad and turn up the music, maybe yeah. that'll help. 
see it like I, I always tell people like I never I'll never post this on social media but like whenever people are around me and like I'm having a day where I don't want to lift that's when I start talking because it's like I'm talking myself into the lift like I'm trash talk right. like I'll I'll talk shit about like my competitors but it's like in a way to kind of get me riled up mm -hmm. and it's like oh they think I'm gonna lose like this down they're yeah. like I'm walking around but that's more so for myself because like that's the day where I don't feel like being there um, but I kind of talk myself into kind of like getting into that. You lifting. don't really believe that anyone even cares, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm like, I'm like, they probably don't give a shit yeah, about what yeah. I'm talking about. I probably sound annoying as hell right now, but I need it to like get me to get myself. No, I, I believe in that. I think it's, uh, the locker room stuff, you know, the coach, mm -hmm. uh, you know, puts up the newspaper clipping mm -hmm. of, um, you know, Belichick is famous for that. He would find something with the other team. You know, the, these guys said this, or this cornerback said something about Brady back in the day. And then what happens? That guy gets toasted for like four touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Like they go out and they they seek him out, and, and sometimes coaches even make that shit up. Yeah, coach would be like, "Yeah, you know, by the way, I made that up." <laughs> <You know? laughs> Michael about Jordan made it up for himself. Right. Yeah. Right. He'd be yeah. like, "This guy talks shit about me," and he would do it in fucking like in interviews and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then that guy would be like, "No, I didn't." <laughs> He'd be all scared. <laughs> like I didn't say anything. Yeah. I just use I just use trolls now. I mean, like oh, there's man. like this uh, <laughs> man. There's like this one. There, I have a screenshot on my phone, but this one guy's like, this guy's like, "Oh, Russ is so cringe." I was like, man, fuck this guy. That's great. <laughs> when, when I was working out. I didn't even feel like working out, but like I saw that in a screenshot and I literally just used it for the workout. And I ended up having a great workout. I was like, printed it out, put it in the front of the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was great. So Social media stuff is so weird. And YouTube stuff, you know, like you get a comment yeah, like that and mm. as silly as it is, it kind of like, it kind of hurts you. It kind of irks you. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, why do you, what, what does he mean? Like it somehow makes you feel like you're doing a bad job. Meanwhile, yeah. You got, you know, a couple hundred thousand mm. people following your stuff and you got X amount of likes and so many yeah, comments yeah, yeah. and you got people coming up to you. You changed my life, man. Let's take a picture here. Sign, the, you know, sign, sign my wrist wraps or whatever it yeah. is. You know, like you got people that are, have really been impacted. And then you have the one, the one guy who's like, oh man, you totally cheated on those deadlifts. Why are you using <laughs> straps? And it's like one day you decide to wear straps because you got a little, a little nick in your hand so you don't want to open it up because the contest is coming up and yeah. then everyone complains about it. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was funny because like I was just I was just chilling and I saw that. I was like, man, fuck this guy, man. I like went on his profile and it was like, it was private so I couldn't like really oh, see yeah, anything. Of course, I yeah. was like, man. It was it, probably in SEMA. Yeah. Probably <laughs> open his, private account. His burner account. Yeah, well, it's because we don't want to be um, you know, ostracized out of our our tribe right so like this like back in those days if we mm -hmm. were pushed out pushed out of the tribe then it's like fuck we're probably gonna die yeah. so the second we see somebody talk shit to us we're just like whoa <laughs> hold on wait a tick yeah like, <laughs> like, hold up but um with that though like the uh, i see the hashtag get better uh what is it it's yeah get better today get better today mm -hmm. like i see a lot like you're impacting a lot of people yeah what's that feel like when you're seeing dudes like overcoming so many different things like mm. like that's got to be amazing no nah, it's I've caught myself like in the last couple of years crying. Like sometimes like I go home, I'm like, fuck, like you're kind of, it's like, I don't, when I post some of the stuff that I post, I don't think that people are like gravitating to it as much as they are. Um, I recently had, it was, it was a very interesting day. I was like driving to the gym late at night. Um, and I never work out as late as the day that I went there. Um, and this guy came to me in the gym and he's like, yo man, like I watched your video. It saved me from a dark spot. Like, you know, get better today. Blah, 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 this, that, third. And I just burst into tears right there, mm. like in front of him. I felt so like, I mean, I was just like, I was like, fuck. And he goes, oh, I hope I didn't say anything uh, wrong. I was like, nah, bro, I just needed that. So it's very surreal, to be mm -hmm. honest. Like there's no like real way to kind of explain that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's heavy, right? Like you're not thinking like, uh, I'm just I'm just lifting and I'm sharing it. Yeah. And I I am aware that people do enjoy it. It's obvious that people watch it. They, they do seem to like it. Um, but I wasn't expecting you know, that guy to tell me that he got off a of heroin because yeah. of something that I said or did. You're like, yeah. wow, that's okay. That makes all these videos worth it. That yeah. makes editing them and staying up in the middle of the night and having the thing not upload and having my phone die on me and like all these mm. stupid, crazy things, having too much, uh, not enough storage on your phone anymore yeah. or whatever, the, <laughs> whatever all the weird stuff is that you have to try to figure out to get stuff uploaded. You're like, well, Shit, man, maybe it is all worth it. And mm -hmm. then you get hit by the guy that tells you that you're cringe. Fuck this, <laughs> you're like, fuck this shit. Like, fuck this guy. But yeah. have you guys ever had like imposter syndrome, like about what you're doing? You're just like, you know, why me? Or like, why, like, why is this situation 
unfolding for myself or like sometimes a little bit um what i'm most proud of is that i've been able to positively impact the people that are close to me Mm -hmm. that's my favorite thing and that's the stuff that will pull on my heartstrings pretty pretty strongly um being able to help like i've helped both of my brother-in-laws lose weight um i've helped my brother with addiction you know andrew is always Mm -hmm. complimenting and saying i've helped him with certain things and Mm -hmm. just the people around me so i'm like because What's the point in doing all this if you're not impacting the people that are around you in yeah. some way? My dad will tell me. My dad's like, he's like, yeah, I felt real fat and lazy today. He's <laughs> like, but I saw you walking. So he's like, I got my ass up and I went out on a walk. And that's the kind of stuff that I think is is uh, really awesome. But I, I do, I definitely have had moments of like, yeah, why do people, why do people so fired up? Why do they care so much? But yeah. it makes it a lot of fun. I know yeah, that. For sure. Yeah. yeah if it, I'm pretty, it's, pretty safe to say if it wasn't for mark i I wouldn't have like asked my wife to marry me um in a, in a weird way like we went on a really long walk and he's just <laughs> like fuck that he's like take my take my tahoe house or my um uh bodega bay house mm-hmm. he's like make a big thing about it and then so that was pretty sick and then he had method so, man fucking give me a shout oh, out yeah. and he was <laughs> af- after we got married down. and he's like now go make some babies and now it's like well fuck dude fucking now method got <laughs> man told me so now i got i got my son so mm-hmm. that's dope. yeah that shit's dope um do you have any like <laughs> I know that's fucking thanks, Mark. Uh, <laughs> any any like interesting goals like that that you like have like people within your circle like you know you want them to look up to you the way I look up to Mark or like I don't know it's, I don't know just like anything like in particular. Um, I just want to be like more serviceable, more available to the people around me. Um, nice. Like I, I mentioned earlier, like I'm kind of like a recluse, so it's like I'm cool with just going to the gym and then like kicking it back at the crib by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm trying to be a lot more, um, a lot more purposeful and just like I just FaceTiming my friends or like saying, yo, let's like hang out. Let's go watch the fight together or something like that. Like I'm not the one to normally do that. Mm. Um, so just being more available to them. And then life goals, I just, I mean, I'm getting a little bit older, like 27, 28. So it's like, I would like to have a family, you know, nice. at some point. So that'd be dope. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. So I was talking to my wife. I was just like, Hey, but like Russ Wall's coming to the gym. It's going to be fucking sick. I'm going off. And then, you know, she's like, um, you know, not sure. Like I'll, I'll throw names at her. She's not familiar with everybody, yeah. but I, I showed her a picture uh, or it was a video of you squatting. And she's like, oh, I know his girlfriend. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, I know. Right? I'm like, ha. Huh? Cause, well, cause she follows a, like, uh, she followed Guzman a lot. So Buff okay. Bunny and you know, yeah, them. Yeah, so yeah. That maybe that's how she stumbled yeah. upon them. But it, you know, so we were joking about like kind of getting in trouble, like talking on podcasts and stuff. <laughs> but how long have you guys been together? No, we've been together for uh, two years now. Damn, yeah. son. Yeah. That's It'd be cool awesome. to, I've been, I've been thinking, because like now that I'm getting older, like relationships are no longer just like, just relationships. Mm-hmm. Like you actually have to see a future with that individual, in my opinion. Like, yeah. You know, everyone's different. But. Yeah. Does she work with you too? What do you mean? Like, like work with, with your what? businesses and nah, stuff? Nah, she has, she has her own thing going on. Oh, that's yeah. sick, dude. Yeah. So like, uh, yeah, I mean like, I, I think about children now. Like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, like a couple of years ago, that was not my thing. Like, people yeah. say kids, I'm like, yeah, I got it. Like, whatever. Dude, yeah. like, a, I mean, two years ago now, because my son's one, but uh-huh. like, I was the same. Like, I, I mean, I knew I wanted kids, but like, people would like try to hand me their babies and I'm like stiff arming them. You know? I'm, like, <laughs> just like, it's not my thing. But now with my son, it's mm. like, dude, he's the most amazing thing ever. Like, yeah. I, I can't wait to go home and see him. So, yeah. That's cool that you're already kind of on that path yeah. or like I, that, that wavelength. Yeah, I'm gonna try. You know, having a kid, uh, like, kind of fills in uh, your your purpose, kind of for you, almost. You know, mm-hmm. like you sometimes think, like, what's this all for? What am I doing? Um, it's hard to make sense of any of it, like mm-hmm. whether you're powerlifting or whether you're a football player or a teacher or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's hard to figure out. I mean, all all we can like kind of come up with sometimes is like. Uh, well, I think we're here to like help each other, you know, and it's yeah. like, I, okay, well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, um, but yeah, having a child, it, it kind of, it, it eliminates some of that because you're like, well, I don't really know why we're here necessarily, mm-hmm. but I need to help this little person out as much as I can. And and they're the priority and it really doesn't matter why I'm here. Yeah. All I know is I had them, they're here and I got to mm-hmm. figure out shit for them. Yeah. That's weird. I want to, I want a baby girl. There you go. Like, yeah, I'm already thinking like what I would want. It's like I want a girl. Like, yeah. I, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think if, you got to be on top for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I right? mean, I yeah. Well, well, because if she's on top, gravity pulls everything down, so she just can't get pregnant. Period. So right. You're, you're, yeah. Yeah. Is that facts? <laughs> 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 like I have my all my kids because I was listening to the goddamn podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking amazing, dude. 
Mm-hmm. Um, what are some uh, upcoming goals you got? Um, so f- specifically as to like what I do lifting, I would say for sure, like, so I'm, I'm kind of like separating myself from the IPF and doing USAPL now. Um, so I want to compete in a pile to me and then do a bodybuilding show as well in like the same year mm. and then potentially compete at a much uh, lower weight class and then balloon back up and then compete in a higher weight class. Mm. So what weight class are you in currently? So I'm 82.5. And then, uh, what are some of your best lifts? Um, <laughs> So are we talking gym or just like platform? Oh uh, yeah, the gym's fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you don't like, you don't do any. Sh- I've never seen a shitty lift from you. <laughs> I would say seven thirty three on squat. Um, just recently hit a four sixty three on bench, and mm. then seven fifty on deadlift. Damn. Yeah. What do you think is like? Uh, I mean, it doesn't really sound like there's a weak point there, especially for your weight class. Mm. If there is like a weak point, what do you think it is, and what do you think you need to work on, to like get past? A sticking point. Like, is any, are any of the lifts stuck? Yeah, bench. Like, yeah. bench just recently exploded, and I think it's mostly just because I'm, like, maybe just holding a little bit more body weight. Mm. Um, but it's kind of hard to tell. because yeah, Bench really has a lot to do with the body weight. Yeah, so it's, like, I'm, like, 195, but I'm normally 195. So it's, mm-hmm. we'll see when um, when my weight drops down a little bit more how that sticks. But I would say bench for sure. Because, like, the other lifts are, like, a lot more, they're, I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty decent, but the bench is just kind of, like, it's, middle of the road a little bit i know you have a coach but is it hard to like stay in your lane when you see like other people hit some big lifts here and there does it kind (laughs) of entice you to like man i wonder what that guy's doing i should try that no not really because i just always look at things in like in my lane i don't don't know that's good yeah because i'll see other people hitting big lifts i'm like god damn this motherfucker got like (laughs) 50 pounds on his shit in like three months right but i don't look at it's like oh it's my coach's fault (laughs) i literally just look at it's like yo i gotta work harder like right. I got to make sure like I'm not bullshitting um, when he sends me a program and I got to make sure I'm following it. Mm. So I don't look at him. It's like, yo, you need to do a better job. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to make any corrections with the bench? Like that, that helped maybe get those numbers up? Um, Here and there, I think maybe some cues here and there that maybe helped. But like I said, it's kind of hard to tell because these games are just like really new. Yeah. Like I've never, I, I thought I would hit 463 and like when I was like 30 <laughs> or something like that. Like, so to hit that, like when I'm, the age now it's pretty impressive for me so. anything different going on with your training that may have led to that you're doing like mm-hmm. close grip work or wide mm-hmm. bench or we're, we're looking for the secret yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to figure <laughs> out myself i would say maybe just like maybe reduce the weight a bit like did you go lighter maybe like not, maybe the it was interesting because it was one of the days where i had like a meal before i trained uh, <laughs> uh. so like i was i don't know but i was pretty hyped too because like the, there was a lot of people in the gym so it's kind of hard to kind of put a pin on mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. tell them about bench bagels Oh yeah. yeah. I yeah. Back in the day I used to eat uh a bunch of bagels before I'd work out and and drink a bunch of water. And it would just I'd be so bloated. I'd come <laughs> Fuck, in, I'd look man. like this I'd look like the stay puff marshmallow man. Fuck. But it made me feel so strong. Damn. Salt bagels. You need would to get you, that. Would you do that for in a squat too? Um Well, usually usually it was just a on a bench day. Bench day. Like when I was when I was lifting, it wasn't popular to do all three in the same day. Like yeah. we didn't have mm-hmm. that. We didn't have that technology yet. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like the frequency thing, it came it came later. Like yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. guys bench squatting and deadlifting and stuff mm-hmm. was like. That's why so many of the records have been broken. Like that's yeah. that's very new. Like that was not a thing. Um, you would not even consider like doing any of them on the same day, really. Mm. There were some like Russian athletes and stuff doing it, but you always just thought that was like some crazy Russian protocol. Yeah. And uh, maybe they were lying about it or something to try <laughs> to mm. get you to like kill yourself. But yeah, the, the frequency um, is definitely a newer thing. Do you train that way? You're bench squatting and deadlifting the same day sometimes? Nah, hell no. That was like... That was like one of the first things I told Joey when we start when we start like, working I ain't together. Doing that shit. Yeah, I was like, I am not doing that shit. Like it, the energy expenditure that it takes to do squat, bench, and deadlift in one day is just ridiculous. And I, the time too. I remember that like I could um I could squat first and I can deadlift a little bit afterwards. But the reverse of that, I just like mm. I, I mean, it would be shocking. I, I would I would do a deadlift workout and then I'd have some like squats programmed in there. Yeah. And I'd be lucky if I could go over like two twenty five. It just hurt. <laughs> yeah. And I'd be so angry. I'd be like, this is not worth it. Like this is like making me pissed off. So I would just I was like, I can't work out like that anymore. I gotta figure out something different. No, that shit I 
I see people that do uh, SBD days. I'm just like, I don't know how the fuck y'all do that. Like, they'll be in the gym for like four or five hours, mm. which, I mean, I understand that part of it, but you're literally doing like a heavy compound movement. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, uh, I don't know. I've never been with that one. So you bench squat and deadlift one time per week? Uh, no, nah, so like I set, so I have like one compound movement for the day, like whether it be squat, bench, or deadlift. And then after that particular workout, that's when I move on to the bodybuilding stuff. Mm. Yeah. You do like assistance exercises and exactly. stuff like that? Yeah. Because he tried to combine, like, um, he tried to combine the days. Like, he has people that do, like, maybe three or four day programs. Mm -hmm. So maybe they have, like, a squat and a bench day. Um, where I mean, yeah, squat and a bench where they're doing it on the same day. Mm -hmm. Or a squat and uh, deadlift or deadlift right, and right. bench or whatever. I, I just told him, I'm like, personally for me, I need this to be kind of, like, laid out on a daily basis. So give me something I could do for one day and then... I'll be able to be a lot more in tune with my training. Nothing better than hiring a coach and then telling him what to do. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way it's going to be. No, coach. no. I was like, that's that's my only stipulation. Other yeah, than that, yeah. bro, like do anything and I'll, I'll say, tell me to do anything. I'll do it. Who yeah. are some of your uh, favorite lifters? Some lifters that you look up to. <clears throat> so okay, I have a question for that. Like, would you like say you had lifters that you looked up to whenever you were competing? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Because it's like. Yeah, yeah, but they're, I mean, like, Ed Cohn, you know, people like yeah. that, like, uh, kind of the um, Stan Efforting, you, you know, mm. um, comes to mind. A lot of the other guys were, like, uh, they were, like, my competitors, kind of, so, like, yeah. they weren't, like, even though I admired what they were able to do, yeah. uh, I didn't like them very much, because <laughs> <laughs> we were competing against each other. I would say, uh, I would say for me, like, people that I watch lift that give me that, that anxious feeling. That makes me, I'm like, oh, I got to do more. Mm -hmm. I'd say John, uh, John Hack, uh, Taylor Atwood. And that's, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Do you um, like watch a lot of other lifters or not really? Like you, you get it all done in the mm -hmm. gym and you don't really watch a ton of it. I actually, yeah, I don't watch this shit yeah. ton of powerlifting stuff. It's like, I'm so powerlifted out. Like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I had understand. this conversation with someone before. It's like, I powerlift and then that's it. Like I'm. I'm watching video about videos about Marvel and shit. Like there you that's, go. Yeah. that's the type of content I consume. Or like watching football mm -hmm. or uh, basketball. So So you're you're able to kind of like disconnect from power. For lifting. sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. Because Mark was saying the other day, like he would uh he would be asleep in bed and he'd wake up like pushing like an imaginary <laughs> bar because it was on his mind all the time. Like he ate, you know, he slept and did it. powerlifting. But that's pretty crazy. That's, like funny. I've done that before. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever done anything like that? No. Nah, I mean, not, not, I mean, like, no, nah, not for the most part. Like, I mean, for me, like, I get the training out of the way and I, I give it all in the gym and I leave it in the gym and then I don't really take it home with me. Man, that's um, huge. Yeah. It's just it's it's too much. I think that for me personally, I would start to overthink things. Um, so it's just like, yo, just, you know, get your shit done in the gym and then like, just kind of free yourself of that whenever you leave. Yeah. I wonder if that's what like keeps people from being so consistent, you know, because they're like, I'm fucking pro power lifter now. So they're like, you know, eat, sleep, dream, power lifting. Yeah. And then they're just like, fuck, I'm doing that again. Yeah. Whereas you, you're kind of like actually unplugging and taking some time off. I think it'll just burn yourself out yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, you just need time to be able to just kind of like disconnect. Mm -hmm. Mark, do you see anything at all that like if, if he came to you mm -hmm. and he's just like, like my, whether it be a bench or whatever, um, or if you have any more bench bagel tips or anything yeah. like that, is there anything that you would want to coach Russell on? I think the main thing is is exactly what he's going to be going towards, which is uh, bodybuilding. I think a break from powerlifting would be really good. Mm. And I think when you come back to it, you'll be stronger, especially um, especially when when you go to bodybuilding. If you have a coach or you're really pushing yourself in it, um, I think that you'll notice that you'll you'll get a lot stronger. Um, and I think that also like bench, squat, deadlift, like they don't need to be in there really. Even mm -hmm. for like, they can't be gone for too long probably, Yeah, but they can, you can ditch them for a bit and get some growth out of some other things. And when you go back to it, it'll be like a little bit of a relearning process, but it'll take like three weeks Yeah, and then you'll be stronger than ever. That's what Stan did. Stan, you know, he did bodybuilding and powerlifting and I think people thought that he did those simultaneously, mm -hmm. but he didn't. He did them one at a time. He would bodybuild with Flex Wheeler and he'd come powerlift with me and he'd go back and forth and back and forth. And every time he got stronger and stronger and stronger until he did like a 2300 something. Fuck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's the rhino. He's unbelievable. He's, yeah. 
in, insanely strong. So I think it'll serve you well to jump into some bodybuilding for a bit. And yeah. then your weight stuff, that sounds great too, like gaining some weight, yeah. dropping some weight, manipulating your body weight will be really helpful. Yeah, that's something I'm super excited about this year. I feel like I've done the powerlifting stuff for a couple of years now, mm. and it's just so linear, mm. just like kind of straightforward. So it's cool to like kind of like push myself in a different arena. What's some stuff that you like to do for personal development type stuff? What do you mean? Like, do you uh, like listen to books or do you oh, read books or do you podcast? Uh, podcast. I think the most annoying thing about me, um, <laughs> Duhan's walking in right now. I always have something playing audio wise. Like, um, I'm listening to a conversation. I'm listening to people talk about having a conversation. Like, it's podcasts are like my go to. Mm. So, like, I'll get into a podcast and binge listen the podcast. So, like, even with this podcast, the Powercast, mm -hmm. uh, the Power Project, like, mm -hmm. I literally just binge watched it. And I was like, that's oh, great. shit is good, bro. I fuck with this shit. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And then I have like a myriad of podcasts I tune into. Um, same thing with the Joe Rogan podcast. If mm -hmm. there's something that I want to kind of tap into, I'll, I'll go binge watch that. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. How have you stayed uh, injury free? Uh, just lifting smart. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like um, if, if I feel something, I'm just like, nah, not today. Mm -hmm. Like, there's been so many times I'm in the gym and I'll, I'll get in position and it just does not feel right. Mm. And I'm like, Mm, it's not worth it. Like, I'm not going to push myself. Or if, like, um, I want to say if I get myself in a compromising position, mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm not going to continue exploring this. Mm -hmm. Like, there's obviously times where you could push it, but, right. like, as an athlete, you should know, like, okay, like, something doesn't feel right here. I'm going to go ahead and take five and, like, maybe, like, come back to this maybe tomorrow mm -hmm. or something like that. What's yeah. in your head when you're training and there's, like, shit's getting, like, real hard? Like, do you get excited about it um are you halfway nervous about it you know are you trying to fire yourself up or like is there anything that you go to uh to get yourself i don't know prepared for it? or are you more mellow because you're like well the training is just a training and uh my strength at this time is going to be just a byproduct of the lifting that i've been doing yeah i mean it depends on like the day i know for sure like some days i have to get myself super duper hyped and I, like I have like a particular hype crew in the gym that does a pretty good job of doing that, um, but a lot a lot of times too like we'll be in there by myself. Um, like when I say by myself, I mean like we yeah. just do on. Um, like there's this feeling I feel like a lot of lifters, like a lot of new powerlifters don't understand, like that that butterfly feeling. And I feel like that's when you're being stimulated. It's like when the adrenaline is running. Mm -hmm. So it's like whether I'm ready or not. If I feel that, I'm like oh fuck, I'm going right now because like my my mm -hmm. body's ready to go. Um, so. For the most part, I guess it comes out mellow, but like inside, I'm like, I'm like, oh shit, like it's coming, like mm. oh shit, I'm about to lift. So, yeah. and I feel like uh, most lifters, just in general, like are probably on way too many like stimulants <laughs> to even feel what that is, right? <laughs> like, do you even mess with like pre workouts and that sort no, of? No, I, I I mess with pre workouts. Mm -hmm. That's the only caffeine I take. Yeah. Like, I don't do energy drinks or anything like that. Like, if I'm gonna get, take caffeine, it's gonna be uh, through pre workout. And then sometimes, like, I might cycle off, but. Mm. it's like one of those things it's like a ritual for me mm -hmm. like either taking it to the face or like mixing some up yeah any other supplements um not like multivitamin strong joints and all that kind of stuff like pretty straightforward um when it comes to like the personal development stuff is there anything that you've been like kind of into more recently that uh yeah that's really got you excited yeah i mean therapy <laughs> going to therapy that's mm. that's that's been like a a life changer for me. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of understanding like why do you feel the way you feel mm. or like being able to kind of break things down. Um, that's been a that's been a game changer for myself. You physically go to like a therapist or is it like something that you're doing like nah, via? Yeah, virtual. I think everything at this point is virtual. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Right. So. Um, I find that that kind of stuff is really interesting because uh, even just like saying stuff out loud has a lot of power. Mm -hmm. um, I've found that even just talking to my phone, like talking into my phone and recording stuff yeah. and just talking about how I feel in a particular moment, even that's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, recording it uh, with with video sometimes is helpful because you say it out loud and you hear yourself say it again because a lot of times that's what a therapist will do. Yeah, A lot of times a therapist will say, oh, I understand you feel this way because uh, you think so-and-so is trying to do this to you and you're yeah. like, God damn, that sounds really dumb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that yeah. is how I feel. Yeah. And you kind of start to recognize you're like, that kind of sounds a, like that sounds a little irrational. Like I I should I should probably let some of that go or should I think yeah. I should think of a different strategy. Yeah. I think that I mean, 
if you want to keep it in sports, I think a lot of athletes should have like a therapist. Like you, they, I think it will do a lot of justice for them to like just talk to mm -hmm. someone or just figure out different tools that they use to express themselves. Because when you think about it, like if you really think about all your power with your friends, you're like, God damn, like you are an anxious ass person. <laughs> yeah. Like I have friends that literally, Tense. yeah, they are so fucking scared of like weight, like on the bar. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know what to do. Fucking do it. Oh, no, no. Like the weight's on the bar. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you an anxious person, bro. Like, just go talk to, like, I feel like if you talk to a therapist, you get a lot out of that. Because, like, a lot of their personality that they have inside the gym transfers over into real life as mm. well. So, it's just like, you know, if you get that figured out, that could do a lot for you. Out of the people in your circle, are you, like, about the same age as everybody? Or are you a little bit older now? Um, It depends. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like my personal circle, I'm the, we're all the same age. Um, But, like, now the people that I'm working with that are now getting more closer to my personal circle. Like they're a lot younger than me. Got it. Yeah. And it's yeah. funny. So like with a therapist and stuff, like, you know, traditional bro mentality, we're just like, nah, fuck that. I'm too manly to like, let, yeah. Let anybody know I even have feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what made you take that leap and actually start talking to somebody? Um, the, the people in my circle, to be honest, like they all started getting therapy. Um, or at least like experimenting with some form of therapy and like maybe we're like confessing things to each other in the group chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when we're not being toxic. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> you know how the group chat beats sometimes, yeah. but like when we're actually having <laughs> constructive conversations, it's just like, oh yeah, like I actually go to therapy. It's like, oh shit, like you do. Like, mm -hmm. you know, unpack that for me. Like, let me figure out like mm -hmm. what do you actually get from me? Because we had such a negative stigma towards therapy. It's like, you know, is there something wrong? It's like, no, I just, just mental checks here mm -hmm. and there. Yeah, the second you let your guard down, Mark will absolutely fucking crush you. <laughs> it's amazing. It's always funny, like when when he does it to somebody else, and you laugh, but then you're like, ah, oh, I know mine's coming. <laughs> it's like, are you gonna go talk to your fucking therapist about this? <laughs> yeah, right. it's like, damn, dog. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think people do need to have a reinterpretation of you know what they think therapy is because there's so many people that are uh, depressed and anxious and for sure um, upset about various things, but then they just say, I, I have a lot of anxiety or they say I'm an anxious person. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, uh, maybe you don't have to be, maybe yeah. you can get some mm -hmm. assistance for it. Yeah. And I think also too, like within families and stuff, or even friend to friend, um, it is helpful to talk with a friend. It, it mm -hmm. can help a lot, but like, we're not experts. Yeah. Like we don't know anything about it. So it's like, if you want to know how to bench press, you go to somebody that knows how to bench press. Exactly. You, know, you want to know how to take care of your anxiety. There's probably people that have studied that before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can go to them or you can look it up on YouTube and you can find great information. And maybe that is like a, um, uh, like a, you, uh, putting your toe in the water to kind of like see like what kind of information's out there. And then maybe it gives you confidence to be like, you know what, I should probably just call somebody. It'd probably be really helpful. Yeah. I feel like a lot of, I mean, like I mentioned before, like there's a lot of people that their whole identity is just lifting mm -hmm. and I'm like, it, it shouldn't be like that. Like, yeah. I feel like you should understand who you are outside of the gym and then like obviously have the person you are inside of the gym as well. But, um, you know, you should go and unpack that, whether it's like trying to figure that out and like maybe writing it down, like you said, or talking to a health professional, like mm -hmm. figure that out. So like you should be uh, Russell that, that that also happens to be a lifter, not yeah. a lifter who's named Russell. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then so another thing that we talk about on this podcast a lot and and Seema's been helping me out a ton with this and he'll slap the shit out of me if I slip up. Not <laughs> not really. Um, but um is is negative self talk. Yeah. Um do you I don't know, have do you ever like work on that? Do you ever like you I've know? my so like, that goes back to like how I was raised. My parents yes. never raised me to like talk negative on myself mm -hmm. or like even you know those people that kind of just like ah oh, I'm such a shit like oh, I feel like yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a piece of shit or like this down the third I'm like I'm like I've never I've never grown up saying that kind of mm -hmm. stuff or I might say that jokingly but like it's never like something that's consistent within like my my um my conversation mm -hmm. so yeah I I try my best to be intentful like or I don't even know if that's a word <laughs> intentful fuck it it is now <laughs> <laughs> like I try to make sure it's like I'll say um. Oh, I'm um, like, if, yeah, if I, if I win, <laughs> if I win nationals, it's like someone might around me might correct me. It's like, no, no, no. When you win nationals, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my bad. Like, yeah, my fault. I got you. But Makes it's sense. little stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it helps with like the visualiz uh, visualization process. Just kind of like being able to like visualize yourself doing something. Um, if you constantly say that you're going to do it, you get used to the thought of doing it versus like being surprised when it's like thrust upon you. So. Do you have a uh, business stuff that frustrates you? You said you had a hard time kind of letting go of stuff to people. Have you given stuff to people and then they just jacked it up? 
I don't want to say anything that's going to get me in trouble. So, okay. oh, I'd say, uh, yeah, no, I don't want to. Cause I mean, I'm going to have situations like where you've gotten, like where you've been, uh, mad to the point where you're kind of mad at yourself for how mad you are. You ever have that happen? Like that happens to me. Yeah. I'm like, man, I'm really th- this. I'm like, this kind of sucks. Like I should not be this mad. This is yeah. dumb. Yeah. I've had those. I mean, I feel like when you talk to other business owners, like everyone, you know, <laughs> everyone kind of have those situations. Yeah. Um, I think too, like, I used to hate like the tough conversations. Mm. Um, Cause like you try to be cool with people and like show them like, Hey, like this is, you know, this is like a great, op- like this is a fun yeah. thing to do this, that, right. and the third. But then when you have to sit down and have those like real like business mm-hmm. conversations where it's like, bro, you're not doing this, that um, correctly. I need you to like shape it up and do this better. Right. Um, I used to hate doing those, but I, I feel like I've gotten better at that. But yeah, there's a lot of frustrations that I just, I'm just, I'm not going to. Some stuff that's been helpful for me in that regard is like, um, you know, trying to manage people, you know, yeah. what's been the most helpful th- thing for me is to hire people that don't need management. Mm-hmm. That's been like, that's, and that's that not easy. It yeah. might take longer. Um, but that's the goal is like, you, you don't have to like tell your photographer like and videographer mm. what to do. He already knows how to like video. You might have suggestions for him because you shot a lot of stuff yourself and say, Hey, people kind of like these style of videos and things like that. But, mm. Um, you could let people to be a little bit more autonomous, um, mm. especially if they are, if you're not just picking people randomly out of the crowd, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and that's kind of what I did when I started this business was I did pick a lot of people that were just into the products. And that mm. was actually really helpful in the beginning, but to get, it gets to a certain point where, uh, the business isn't just like this side thing. It's an mm. actual business. And then you do have to kind of worry about um, bottom line and there does have to be there's got to be some structure to the thing if yeah. the thing's going to chug along for as long as you'd like it to mm. move along um, you have to uh, there's like money in there's money out like yeah. it just there's like certain things that you have to kind of adhere to otherwise you won't have a business anymore mm-hmm. yeah facts yeah Mark would also um, he would call it a shit sandwich when he's <laughs> dealing with people um, if you know what I'm talking about you can go ahead and explain it <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so so a shit sandwich is actually kind of different than that, but like a com- uh-huh. it's a compliment sandwich is what it oh, is. Oh my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> about the same. Yeah. Well, it could have some shit in the middle of it, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> compliment sandwiches. Uh, uh, Russ, dude, I appreciate like you're here every day. You're always fired up. I love the enthusiasm that you have. Mm-hmm. But the last edit you made in the last video, I think you cut out a pretty good clip. Um, Andrew did a really good squat mm-hmm. and he's making a lot of progress. And so I would have loved to have that clip in there. Um, and then I would finish it with one more compliment. Like, Hey man, I love the other day when you helped, uh, Andrew out, uh, with his deadlift. Like that was really cool. So mm-hmm. yeah, you, uh. you, uh, you know, hype him up, <laughs> you <laughs> give them, you hit them with the truth. Yeah. And then when you kick their ass out of the room, you give them another compliment. Yeah. That's something I'm trying to work. Like, I feel like I'm very, um, I'm very do the task and that's kind of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I've, I'm trying to do a better job of like thanking people. Yo, I appreciate like, yo, Thank you for going out of your mm-hmm. way to do that. Like I, you know, it really helped with, it right. helped me like be able to kind of like do what I need to do on this part. So like, I think this morning I practiced that. And I feel like little stuff like that goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like some people like if you're just doing tasks and you're not hearing like good job or like mm-hmm. this down the third, you're just kind of like not knowing like what's going on. Yeah. Cause people, they're, they're not robots. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There are other things too, though. Like you can, if you got time, you can explain to people, um, this is the kind of business that this is. Uh, if you don't want to work on Saturday and Sunday randomly, this probably isn't the place for you. Yeah. If you like to hear thank you and please and all that all the time, this might not be the right spot for you. I am going to appreciate what you do. I am going to try to highlight it when I can, mm-hmm. but I may feel in a lot in times that like we're just going and mm. like, so you can also, you know, it's kind of up to you. It's your own business. That's the fun yeah. part is you get to kind of control uh, how you would like to proceed with it. But it's not easy to find people that um, a lot of, a lot of people do need like reinforcement for sure. And uh, just stupid stuff. Like you have to repeat yourself a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my most hated things is to repeat myself. <laughs> Uh, I hate like, you know, you, you have a message for the team or for people. And then six weeks later, you got to mention it again. And then six mm-hmm. weeks later, you got to mention, there are things that 
as a leader, you'll have to mention time yeah. and time and time again. It's no different than lifting. Yeah. Uh, if you don't address some of the small muscle groups, like it's going to come, it's going to rear its ugly head at some point. Knees going to give out, elbows are going to hurt or whatever it might be. And you're not taking the time to address those things. It's like they have to be readdressed here and there, readdressed, readdressed, readdressed. So I went to a conference one time, which was like a kind of a leadership conference, a, um, uh, this is a big seminar with, you know, Tony Robbins type people and that mm. kind of stuff. And the first thing that the guy said, and I, and I was thinking like the whole time I'm thinking, um, or, and I wasn't thinking the whole time. I was something that I had as a preconceived thing. Like I hate repeating myself and mm. anybody that I need to repeat myself to just, uh, sucks at their job, you know? <laughs> and I sit down and I like got my, my notebook out and the guy's like, if you're going to be a leader, he's like, the number one thing you have to do is repeat yourself. And I was like, Damn. <laughs> I was like, that guy just broke his foot off in my ass. Oh, that's uh, funny. He's like, it's not Crushed easy. He's you. like, it might be exhausting at times, but that's the first thing you got to do. I'm like, Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> When it comes to uh, bodybuilding and jumping on stage, uh, what do you guys have to work on? Like, what do you think is something that you're going to have to, you know, we hear people like, oh, I got to bring up my shoulders. I got to, yeah. you know, what, uh, do you have anything like that? Um, I would say probably just like my conditioning. Like whenever I get mm. down to that body weight, because I know like the first time I did a show, that was like something I struggled with just because I didn't respect the sport mm. as much, if I'm being honest. Like mm. it was my first time doing it. And I thought that like, oh, like I'm lean enough, like I'm fine. Then when I got when I got to that stage, I was like, God damn. And you feel long, like a real fatty. Yeah, man. I'm like, these motherfuckers <laughs> lean. So how long ago was that? Man, that was like five, six years ago. We got video footage of this? Yeah, is that on your channel maybe? Somewhere deep down. <laughs> down the I think if hole. you type in like Russell Orhe bodybuilding show or something like that. Mm. See what happens. Yeah. And I freestyled my um my, uh, made it my up. posing my posing routine thing. I think I played Pretty Ricky and I was just like dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I would like dance into poses and that was That's pretty great. much it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, here we go. Oh shit. Body that was fast. Bodybuilding is a tough That's sport. Job. Yeah, it is. Um, what about like, uh, so like me, I, I love, uh, you know, doing like the, uh, you, you mentioned, um, fuck is his name? Uh, the guy that was calling, that said that you were fake natty. Um, oh, Greg Doucette. I can't believe his name just slipped me. It's been a long day, <laughs> but, uh, I love following his diet, you know, like yeah. it's like super high carb, high protein, pretty much like very little fat. Like, do yeah. you know what route you're going to go when it comes to like shredding down to get stage lean? Uh, I have no clue. I think for the most part, I'm just going to get a guy that I trust and I've seen him bring along athletes and just be like, you, I'm trusting you to, to mm. take care of this. Like. Let's go get it. So, Sick. Yeah. How'd you do in this competition? I got second. So... Is this the only bodybuilding show you've ever done? Yeah. I think that dude in the middle, yeah, the dude right there with the black, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he ended up taking first. Oops, where's that? Do, no. Did you have to do um, cardio and stuff like that for oh, the yeah. show too? Yeah. Yeah, but I wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't doing everything I should have been doing. Yeah. Let's say that. Like I would... Uh, every Thursday, I have this thing with like... Uh, the cheese Chex mix. Mm. I would eat like a bag of that every Thursday, which like in hindsight, like, that, was, <laughs> that was fucking stupid. <laughs> I just thought that I'm like, well, I mean, it's a bag of Chex mix. Like, what is it going to do? You know? Yeah. I love foods like that though. Like the, like certain foods just get you, you know, the cheese Chex, Chex I, mix. I don't even like snacks either, which is like a weird thing. I, I That's fuck. a good one though. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good go-to. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to be thinking about that for mm. a while. Yeah. I don't know about y'all. I, I, I hate snacks. You're not much of a snacker? No, not at all. I just never met any food that I don't like. I love yeah. I love everything. <laughs> yeah, I try not to just because of all the shit that I've learned from yeah. this podcast. Yeah. Where yeah. It's <laughs> like, you know, and Seema says meals at meals and that's it. Like there's no like snacking in between. Yeah. But like, man, give me one of those pop tarts. And I'm just like, mm, those are good. The tasty yeah. pastries. And I'm just like, yeah, I'll have that. Being, <laughs> being Nigerian, have you eaten some like goat head and stuff oh, yeah. like oh, that? Like sure. Seema talks yeah. about. Yeah. I've seen a goat killed in front of me. There you oh, go. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Goat's like the main... Main right. uh, main protein choice of Nigerians for sure. Mm -hmm. You ever you, you ever you, visit? Uh, yeah. yeah, I used okay. to. So when I was, I think like going into high school, I used to go to Nigeria every summer. Yeah, yeah. Um, did did you uh, eat pretty good growing up? Like, did you have? Yeah, my mom was. My mom would cook like good, full meals, mm. like with a lot of vegetables. Like, I think like her feeding me vegetables at such a young age. Like, I love vegetables now. I think it's a huge uh, gap in our society. I don't think parents cook as much. 
Yeah. I don't think people have like family dinners anymore. And we, we have them almost every single night. Mm -hmm. We're very fortunate to be able to do that. But I think that's a huge gap in a lot of families is that, uh, everyone's just like grabbing whatever food they can get mm. and it's usually kind of junk food you know yeah no nah, she used to cook like she used to i mean she loves cooking so she would experiment with a lot of different stuff mm. like she would like make like stuffed chicken and like skirt steak and, like all awesome. this kind of stuff like it was it was great growing up yeah andrew want to take us on out of here buddy yeah sorry i was mid burp oh <laughs> that was crazy uh thank you everybody for checking out today's episode sincerely appreciate it uh please like today's video or today's episode and uh, drop us a comment on anything you guys found interesting today and uh subscribe if you guys are not subscribed turn all those uh notifications on uh asap because we got some like awesome guests coming up uh anyway yeah follow the podcast at mark bell's power project on instagram at mb power project project on tiktok and twitter my instagram and twitter is at i am andrew z make sure you guys follow Insima yang uh that's at Insima yang and at Insima yin yang on tiktok and twitter uh links to everything down below in the description as well as the podcast show notes russell where can people find you online um, so you can find me at Russ Wall and everything. So YouTube, IG, Twitter, TikTok, just type in Russ Wall. I should come up. How many S's in Russ Swole? Two. Okay. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's what that's about, tricky. um, <laughs> how can people find your gym? What's it called? Uh, Corrupted Strength. So if you type in Corrupted Strength on social media platforms, you should find it there as well. Too. And then what about your gear, your clothing and stuff like that? What can people gear find? Gear is going to be the Get Better Today brand, um, or the GBT brand website. So just head on there. Cool. Yeah. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. Peace.